So on the day of, was it night time or day time? Uh, so on the daytime, 14th of September, mm-hmm. the, the day before we had been to a music festival in London, just me and Nick uh, with some friends and just had a great time. And then on the 14th, I set off for work uh, about four in the morning to get up to Hull for the sort of start of the business day. So um, all the way through that day, I was in communication with Nick because the kids were off school cause it, or a nursery because they weren't well. Uh, and she was still nursing a little bit of a hangover. Um, but um, they were fine, you know, normal, normal day other than all staying at home together on a Monday. Yeah. So yeah. the kid who did this was 27, Polish guy. Is that correct? He was 23. 23, so a lot younger. Yeah. And there was no signs, nobody ever knew him or ever came across him or... No, he was uh, he was a bit of a mystery, and and you know the investigation afterwards kind of proved that he he'd come over to the UK in 2014. Um, no previous um, mental health issues, as far as anyone knew. Uh, had a job in a warehouse locally and lived in a shared accommodation uh, house, um, but as, as far as anyone knew, you know he was just very very quiet. Yeah. So when you got the phone call, Nick phoned you to say that somebody broke into the house. Yeah, so it'd been a long day. Um, I'd been working with this director for, till about seven o'clock in the evening, and as I got back to the hotel with a group of the group of the guys that I was working with, they were all like, "Right, let's go out for a few beers." I was like, "I can't be asked, I'm knackered. I'm going to go up to my room and, and, and have a phone call with the kids." So I phoned Nick about half past seven, and she said, "Yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry. You know, you know, just relax, and uh, I'll speak to you later on." So put the phone down, and uh, I drifted off to sleep at about eight o'clock, and uh, I woke up at about half past 11 with the phone ringing. But it was on charge across the other side of the room, so I couldn't get to it. Um, when I did get to it, there was a message from Nick on there saying, can you ring me as soon as you get this? So, yeah, no worries, I'll, uh, I'll I'll give you a call back, see what's going on. I thought there'd be a problem with one of the kids, you know, maybe not well or needs to go to urgent care, something like that. So I phoned her back, and uh, the first thing she said was, um, there's been a bloke hanging around outside the house earlier. Um, and don't get cross with me, but I called the police. I was like, well, why would I get cross with you? I said, That's, you've done the right thing. She, I said, what was, it, you know, what was he doing? She said, well, he was kicking and punching our car. And when I opened the window, tell him to, uh, to, do, to get, get lost, she said, um, he was talking about kids. She said, but I couldn't really understand him, what he was saying. So she said, I just phoned the police and they came. She said, but they were quite rude to me. She said, they kept saying, you know, what's he got to do with you? Why is he talking about your kids? She said, well, you know, it's partly why I'm worried, <laughs> you know. Um, he hasn't got anything to do with my kids. So the police had gone, but they hadn't come back to her to let her know what had happened. Um, and she said, I'm a little bit worried because I can hear banging again. You know, I'm worried that he's come back. He's got the hump because I phoned the police on him and he's, he's going to, you know, have a go at me or something. So I said, all right, look, phone the police, see what they did. So she said, all right. So she's gone onto the other phone, phoned the police, come back to me. She said, they don't really give a shit. They've let him go. So she said, I'm really worried now. I said, well, look, don't worry, don't panic. Mum and Dad are away, they're in Cyprus. Get the keys, they only live around the corner. Just drive the car, get the kids in there, don't even get them dressed. Stay at my mum's for the night and I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, yeah, okay. And then she said to me, uh, did you hear that? I was like, no, I didn't, can't hear anything, only you. She said, there was a big loud bang. I said, no, didn't hear anything. She said, oh, I'm just gonna go and check what it was. And then next thing I know, you know, she, she, she screamed, there was someone in the house. And what's going through your mind at that time? Um, you know, instantly, I, I think I screamed, you know, and I, I leapt out of bed because um, I heard I heard Nikki actually say, you know, um, what, what do you want? Get out of my house. So I knew someone was in there. It wasn't like there's someone trying to get in. There's someone in there. Um, so uh, I grabbed the hotel phone and I dialed 999 and then it wouldn't work because obviously you have to dial nine first. So I tried again, nine and nine, nine. Got through to the local police. Um, and I could hear Nikki on the phone, um, kind of um, some some screams and some like, you know, get away, you know, that kind of stuff and pushing. I could hear sort of a struggle going on. Um, and while I was through to the police, I was trying to sort of relay information to them to say, look, I, I know you can see that I'm in Hull because obviously it goes through to the local place, but I need you to get me through to the the force control room in Hertfordshire. I need, I need you to get me through there because there's somebody in my house attacking my wife. And they just couldn't really understand what I was saying. I, and I, as far as I remember, I was articulating it quite well. I was calm. I was like, get me through there. Now someone's attacking my wife. But as the call went on, I started to lose control a little bit because they weren't listening to me. And I could hear what was going on on the other line, which was horrendous. Um, 
And then the woman came on the phone to me and said, um, I, I've managed to locate the Hertfordshire Police control room and they've actually got someone en route to your property now. So don't worry, so I'm sending someone to your hotel. I said, what's, can you hear what's going on on your phone? I said, no, it's gone quiet. It's gone, it's gone completely quiet on the line. And then, then it just suddenly dawned on me that obviously the kids are in there. You know, there were so many thoughts going through my mind at that time. You know, I think deep down, I knew something really awful had happened because of the nature of the screams that were on the phone. I kind of assumed that Nikki was probably dead and I thought the kids were probably next. Um, and I just lost control. Um, I remember screaming down the phone at this poor operator on the phone, you know, that she was going to be responsible if my, anything happened to my kids because she hadn't acted quick enough and all this kind of stuff and it wasn't her fault. Um, and as soon as I put the phone down to her and I kept the line open to Nick and I was just talking to her down the phone, I was just saying, you know, stay with me, you know, I know you can hear me, just please, just don't, don't, don't go, don't leave me. And... Uh, I couldn't get up off the floor. My legs were completely gone numb. I just could not get up off the floor. I was just dragging myself up onto the bed, um, trying to make my legs work. And I remember just hitting my legs with my fists and trying to get some feeling back into them so I could get up and go downstairs to the, to the reception and start seeing what was going on. And, uh, and yeah, I managed to pull my jeans on and a T-shirt and I, I went out of the room. I ran down to the... Uh, to the reception and I tried to find out the numbers of the rooms that my friends were staying in. And he gave me a couple of numbers. I ran back upstairs and I was knocking on the doors, but of course I forgot they'd all gone out on the piss. So they weren't in their rooms. Yeah. Uh, and eventually, you know, I just sat down in reception. I just remember sitting there shaking, you know, I couldn't control my arms and my shoulders. They were just shaking. And I was trying to talk to Nick on the phone. And then all of a sudden I heard the children crying on the phone. So I knew they were alive at least. And uh, but then I could hear them ask, you know, saying to mummy, wake up, you know, and one of the kids was saying, why has this happened to our family? And they were only six and three. So something, you know, for them to be sitting there and or do whatever they were doing, something awful had happened, and I knew. Uh, and then I heard the paramedics arrive with the police and that's when I cut the line off. I didn't want to listen to any more. And at least I knew the kids were kind of safe. At least I knew that someone was there with them. But it seemed like forever that that took, you know, um, but it, in reality, it was probably only about three or four minutes in its in entirety of that phone call. Um, and then I just sat downstairs waiting for the police to arrive in the hotel. How long did they arrive to come and see you? Uh, they were there in about 20 minutes. <laughs>